my name is Allison Espindola. I'm excited to talk with you about the annual grant final report. Today's goal is for you to walk away with a better understanding of the reporting process for the two grant areas, Entry Track or PPA annual grants. Uh, before we do get into the de details, I do want to mention that this presentation will be saved as a PDF and available for your reference later on. It'll be emailed to all registrants as well as linked on our website. Um, same with the recording for this webinar. It is being recorded and we'll be shared. The link for the recording will be shared with you as well as available on our website and our YouTube. I won't be reading all of the information on the slides today because there is a lot of it. So please make sure you do reference back if you have any questions. To begin, I do want to make a note that the Idaho Commission on the Arts fiscal year begins July 1st and ends June 30th. And that will be the time frame for that annual grants reporting period. So activities that began July 1st, 2023, and that will end July, June 30th, 2024. Final reports for annual grants are due on July 31st, 2024. And that includes the Arts Education Annual Project Grant, the Public Programs in the Arts, and Entry Track Annual Grant. I also want to mention that um, applications for upcoming annual grants are due Friday, January 31st, 2025. Entry track and PPA grants support organizations that offer public programs in the arts, and both grant categories must fill out a final report every year. The final reporting on all activities from that July 1st through June 30th and the report must be submitted by that July 31st date. The final report for these two grants include 10 narrative questions, three sections where you will upload supporting documentation, and four components that I term as other, where you'll need to key in key and in important information regarding your final report um, and your activities as an organization. I do recommend that you prepare this report with both your executive director and your accountant or treasurer because there is a lot of information um, and those that have worked in this and have that organizational information are really great at assisting and filling in some of those questions as well as other components. As I get into the final report um, and the details, I'm gonna first review those narrative questions and some tips for your responses. Uh, two of the narrative questions are supported by two of the three uploads. So I will point those out and describe them as we go. Um, after discussing the narrative questions, I'll cover that last upload that you'll need to include before getting into the four other components. On this slide, you will see eight of the 10 narrative questions broken down for you. I'll get into more detail on questions four and nine, which are missing from this slide in just a moment. But on your screen, you'll see most of the questions that you will be asked in your final report. As you might note, many of these questions have two parts to them. Please make sure that you answer both parts of those questions. I wanna draw your attention first to questions five and seven on your screen. With these two questions, I encourage you to consider using bullet points when you're filling in your information. Question number five is about your overview of your organization's structure, board, staff, responsibilities, and volunteers. Um, including that information in a bullet point is a wonderful way of providing that information. Question number seven is explaining how your organization is reaching its long-term goals. And that's another wonderful place to put your bullet points in, share what that, uh, the long range goal is, and share a brief statement about how you've been reaching those goals. The last two questions on here that I wanna draw your attention to are questions eight and 10. Question eight is about evalu evaluation methods and how they have assisted in measuring desired outcomes. Under the attachments in the narrative section, Please upload an example of your evaluations used and or the outcomes from those evaluations. This is a, that space where you can support your narrative through showing the evaluations that you've used and also what information you gathered 
while evaluating your programs. Question 10 is about your wow moment, or really it's sharing about your impact for the grant period. This is the time to brag and to share about what the amazing things that are that you are doing. Under the samples section of the final report, please upload videos and photos of the show to really showcase your work and to support your narrative response here in question 10. Those are two of the attachments of the uploads, as well as eight of the questions that you will be asked. The other two questions that I wanted to pull out and highlight a little bit more are narrative question number four and narrative question number nine. Narrative question number four is about identifying ways your organization complies with ADA, compli with the Americans for Disabilities Act and Section 504 accessibility requirements. It's important for you to describe how you're both meeting the standards and are planning to move beyond compliance. Please consider discussing things more than physical accessibility and your compliance response. If you're not currently meeting standards or are not offering accessibility accommodations beyond physical accessibility, please plan to provide an explanation on how you plan to do so moving forward. Question number nine um, is where you explain significant changes in your organization. Essentially, it's your place to get ahead of any questions that might arise during the review of your final report. For example, if there is a difference in your organization that occurred during that granting period of July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2024, please describe what happened in your organization during that time frame. Also, if you had a plan and you described activities and programming in your application, but something occurred during that granting period where some of that programming wasn't able to occur, this is the place to describe what occurred and why there was changes to your programming that were originally outlined. Um, if there's large swings in your financials, or discrepancies in your statements, this is also the place to clarify and get ahead of any questions that might arise when your report is being reviewed. The last thing that I do wanna mention here is um, when you're keying in your financials, which we'll get into in just a little bit, um, there's a space for other expenses or other revenue. If you're going to use that as a category, and provide a, a large amount of your funding in there, either income or expenses, please explain what is considered other for you in this question number nine. On this slide is an example of a clear and concise response to question number four regarding ADA compliance. Um, I won't read the information, but I'm just gonna pause for a second for you to look over the information that's on there. The next slide, I will also pause on, I won't read the response here, but this is an example of a narrative response to question number nine that shared major changes to the organization during the grant period. Um, if you'd like to reference these examples later, these slides again will be sent to you as a PDF um, after this webinar as well as available online on our website under um, Arts Learning Lab. So we've covered two, all of the 10 narrative questions and two of the upload sections. The last upload section that you will wanna know about and be prepared for are your summary or your detailed financial statements. These statements include your income st statement or profit and loss statement, um, as well as a balance sheet, a cash flow statement, or a recently completed financial audit by a professional accounting firm. A few things to keep in mind about your detailed financial statements that you are uploading. These statements should be reflected of your organization's fiscal year. They should not necessarily be aligned with Arts Idaho's fiscal year, unless you also happen to report to the IRS July 1st through June 30th. So please make sure that the reports that you're uploading reflect your organizational year. 
um, and whatever you report to the IRS as your calendar, your fiscal year. Also, these statements that are uploaded should be previously approved by your board before uploading them. This means that they may not be the most accurate or the, um, I'm sorry, the most up-to-date financials that you have. Um, and that's okay. It may not be for that entire grant period. It may be for a year previous, but as long as you're, they are complete financials and your board has approved them, please upload those statements. Also, the statements that you are uploading should reflect the accounting method and the principles that you use when reporting to the IRS. For example, if you use accrual, accrual accounting principles when reporting to the IRS, please make sure these statements all use accrual reporting principles as well. Um, you wanna make sure that your statements are accurate um, and appropriate, the date should match, there shouldn't be any missing documentation. There shouldn't be an, any included information that's not requested. Um, so please keep those in mind that those documents should be as accurate as possible. And I do encourage you to be working alongside your accountant or treasurer to ensure that those statements are an accurate reflection of your organization. The last comment that I wanna share on your detailed financial statements uh, please check or have your treasurer or accountant check um, that the statements do reconcile with one another. For example, um, looking at the example on your screen, this is a sample profit and loss or P&L statement and balance sheet. You want to make sure those net revenues match. Um, if for whatever reason those net revenues do not match, which there are reasons why that can happen, please make sure that you identify that and explain it in narrative question number nine uh, so that it prevents that ping back at you for that question of why the statements are different. So with that, that's the last of your uploads. Now we can get into those other categories. Uh, because we ended on finances, I'll start with the first other item, which are your keyed in summary financials. Please provide your summary financials as a detailed overview for your entire organization from July 1st through June 30th. This includes all sources of income, cash, grants, and in-kind, as well as all expenses, such as personnel, rentals, venue, and supplies. Make sure that you include in-kind expenses as well as in-kind um, revenue. Keep in mind, um, when we are looking at your report, we are looking for two very critical things here. First, that your entry track or PPA grant award must be matched at least one-to-one, -one, both as from income as well as in-kind. And also, the entry track or PPA grant must not comprise more than 50% of your budget. This is an example of how the section looks when it is filled out. There are two places that you do need to input your Arts Idaho grant. The actual expenses column, which you'll see at the top right of the screen example, and the actual revenue row, which is down at the bottom of your screen. Make sure you enter the correct grant amount in both locations. You can leave the original budgets columns blank. That is not information that we use when we're reviewing your final report. You're welcome to use it if it is helpful to you, but you do not have to use it um, for your report if you don't want to. I want to draw your attention to the in-kind match. Just as an example, it is for volunteers for $5,000, and it does have a corresponding expense that was added to personnel and administrative cost. 20,000 was paid in cash to personnel and administrative costs. 5,000 of that and the expenses was allocated towards volunteers. And by placing it in both places, um, there's a corresponding expense as well as match. Um, and that's where we can 
identify that those two things cancel each other out. The three other items to note include engagement beneficiaries and locations. For engagement, this is for your entire organization for the entire grant period. Please make sure that you indicate um, who participated um, from July 1st to June 30th in all your public art programming. For beneficiaries, um, please make sure that you select something from the drop down menu um, for all three categories. If you don't select something, it will default to none. Uh, and I will ask you to, to fix that. If in doubt, there is an option that says no single group more than 25%. So please select that option if that is best for you. And the last thing to note here is for locations. List every location and address you offered public programming at for the duration of the grant period. For some of you, I know this is a long list if you are doing outreach programming. Uh, we do appreciate you taking the time to fill in all the locations that you offered public programs in the arts. Um, it allows us to be able to, to illustrate and see how the impact of your programming is spread across the state. So thank you so much in advance for taking the time to fill in all of those locations. I know that is a lengthy list for some of you. Once you have filled in all of these, these sections and uploaded your evaluation methods and outcomes, work samples, and detailed financial statements, you're ready to submit your report. Uh, to submit your report, um, you'll go to grants.arts.idaho.gov and log into your web grants using your credentials. If you're uncertain how to use web grants um, for submitting your final report, there will be a link um, on our website that you can reference. It's at arts.idaho.gov slash final reports. You can also reach out to me at allison.espindola at arts.idaho.gov. A few closing tips for those who have filled out a final report or entry track or PPA report before, you can copy and paste some of your information from previous final reports. I do recommend though, make sure you read what you're copying over and make any updates for new information um, for your new response. Also, please make sure you're sharing your feedback about the process and about your grant experiences with me. Um, let me know if there's a consistent challenge that you're facing with a particular question or process. Um, I can't make promises. I can make any changes or make it go away or make it easier. But the more you share your feedback with me, the more we can try and get ahead um, and improve your experience for yourself and others. Um, with that, I do want to share on your screen, there's some upcoming events and dates to keep in mind. Um, again, your final report for the entry track and the Public Programs in the Arts, or PPA grants for um, this previous year are due on Wednesday, July 31st, 2024. We do also have a couple of grants coming up that you can apply for, um, our quarterly grants for consulting and professional development. The next deadline is September 2nd, 2024. And again, you're welcome to reach out at any time with questions about your final reports and about your grants. Um, my name is Allison Espindola, and that's allison.espindola at arts.idaho.gov. So with that, I would love to open the floor and answer any questions that you might have regarding your entry track or public programs in the arts. I see Megan Brandel does have a question in the chat, so I'm gonna to respond to that one first. And her question was, I just want to clarify that we can include income statement, profit and loss statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, or a recent financial audit report. And that is correct. You can provide your individual papers, but if you did have a financial audit report done by a, a professional accounting organization, um, you can include that financial audit in lieu of those separate financial statements. And feel free for questions if you'd like to unmute yourself and ask away, I'm happy to, to respond to any questions verbally as well.
Well, I will take from the silence. I don't see any hands raised or anything. So if there are any questions, again, please feel free to reach out to myself, or if you have also received an, um, an arts education annual project grant, reach out to Laura Rogar uh, to answer any questions you might have about your final reports for your annual grants with Arts Idaho. Um, while we are closing up, uh, I do wanna say thank you so much again for joining us today. I hope you under uh, obtained a better understanding of the final reports um, for Arts Education Annual Project Grant, Entry Track, and PPA Annual Grants here at Arts Idaho. Um, you should see in just a moment a poll pop up on your screen. Um, please take a moment to answer those two questions there um, to help us better understand the impact of our programming. Again, we do have a few upcoming events um, and dates to remember. Um, your final report is due July 31st, 2024. Um, you're welcome to submit it earlier if you need to or want to. Um, on our next round for uh, consulting and professional development grants is September 22nd, or September 2nd, 2024. And you can learn more about all of these, um, the webinars, upcoming events on our website, arts.idaho.gov, or you can follow along with us on social media. But thank you so much again for all that have attended and joined us today on Demystifying Your Arts Idaho uh, Annual Grant Final Reports. We hope you connect with Arts Idaho again soon.